The Team Never Quit podcast is brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. Navy Federal has played a key role in helping the military community for over 90 years. You can learn more about this at NavyFederal.org. All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Team Never Quit podcast. As always, just wanted to thank everybody for listening, watching, viewing, and if you have not yet, please hit that subscribe button. Before we get into today's awesome episode, let's kick it off with our Patreon question of the day, which is, if you're in the gym, what is your go-to pump-up song? Let's wrap your alley. Is that, it is that, never that, works I, like this. That, it, these right. questions never coincide with the guests, ever. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Melanie set this up. She's I that good. No, they come in. Off, they come. I had no idea what it was. <laughs> we, we've probably got some good answers for you on this. One. Go ahead. All right. Uh, so I'm just going to go since uh, being in the uh, great home state of Texas. I'm going to say uh, "Mouth for War" by Pantera. That's my go-to song if I'm going for a one rep max. When was the last time you were in the gym? Oh, sorry. <laughs> you had to walk through it to get in here, punk. <laughs> and only somebody your size would call me a bitch. <laughs> Period. Yeah, and I've been waiting but for it. I love I you, man. Ready for you to come in here. <laughs> I built myself up just to sustain the podcast. So swole. So swole. <laughs> and just so our listeners know, they have been friends for a ever. very for long time. Ever. Yeah, ever. <laughs> working out together for Forever. a very, very long time. What do you listen to, Dave? Uh, welcome to the Jungle. That's a good Classic. One. I take Classic. my kids to school on that one. Yeah, that's a good one. So I'll throw in Roy Jones Jr. It have to be uh, go hard or go home. Anything Roy Jones Jr. Body head, <laughs> body head bangers ball. You can throw on that whole album, man. It'll freaking get you right. There you go. I'm obviously not a gym rat at all, but if I am working out in the gym, I like good vibrations. <laughs> Mark Wahlberg, Marky how you doing? Mark. I mean, sometimes, you know, yeah. you just got to let it ride. That's yeah. my guy. He plays my stunt double. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's yeah. Awesome. It's, 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 it's because of the height, right? I'm his stunt double in real life. It's yeah. because of the height. That's why. It's only because your abs are so good. How about... Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, they do. Much they from wanted... my childhood and how I grew up through the SEAL teams, the combat and everything that we did, all they want to hear about is how you made all of us. They, oh, they are wow. very interested. So we thought we would bring you on. But then Marcus is like, well, if Billy is going to come on. We have to have some of the guys that yes. trained with us. And oh, so yeah. we have Tommy here uh, with us. He um, also went into the military right afterwards. And we have David Thornberry with us that also trained with him. Um, so the premier cattleman in the state of Texas. Yeah. Yes. Best cattleman. In the That's state right. Of Texas. Thornberries. Yeah. Look it up. Google yeah. it. It's worth it. <laughs> There's a reason why I keep bringing him in here. Yeah. Yes. Um, I bet. I bet. <laughs> so um, today's show is going to be a little different because we have multiple people, but um, we want to hear Billy, if you don't mind telling us just a little bit about you, where you came from and how you got started on this. Well, so, I, come out, I come out of Waco, Texas. That's where you were born? No, I was born in San Antonio, Texas. My okay. dad worked for Farm Bureau. We got transferred up to Waco. He was a claims adjuster. I went to high school there, got out of school there, thought I'd try college. Went up there, Texas Tech, South Plains, and all that. Wasn't as smart as I thought I was, so I dropped out and had to go in the Army. So I went in the Army and started working there and got pushed around, pushed around. I, when I first saw my recruiter, I just said, I want to sign up and I want to go to Vietnam. And that's the only the questions he ever asked me was sign here. So I signed here immediately. Got my wish. Didn't what year he, was that? That was 1966. Okay. Signed up to go in in 1967, come out in 1970. Went overseas, but got, got to do the 68 and 69 tet. Got out and worked for Major General Howard F. Schultz on the East Coast. And when I finally got out and went back to Lubbock, where my dad and mom was, and when I got home, hell, my dad got transferred down to Conroe, Texas. So I said, well, hell, I'd go down there and see him. So when I got down there, I said, man, this ain't bad. So I went back and got my stuff. I was in Lubbock, moved down there. Grew up there and started going to the gym. Started working out. Then we moved out. Then I got married and we moved out to the country out little old place called Willis, Texas, moved out on County Line Road. When I moved out there, we got set up. The little old kid, I used to see him across the street, four or five years old, I guess. So, man, I was out there one day doing something in the yard, and he'd come over. He walked up to my wife, and he looked at my wife, and he said, can he come out and play? I looked around. I'm looking like, who, who could come out and play? His name, he ended up with was a kid named Scott Grader. Mm -hmm. So I started playing with him because his dad was never home. So when Scotty got in school and got in the eighth grade and stuff, I started working out in the gym. And so I just got. Yeah, dad. but you got. All right. So you have a daughter, though, that we grew up with. Yes. Named Dodie. Is that why he came over there? I'm kidding. Probably, <laughs> she's gorgeous. More, more <laughs> probably, yeah. yeah, yeah. All, all of us. So you, you, you moved over to. Con Did, were you already married to mom when you got back yes. to. Uh, in the no, war? I, 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 didn't, I didn't get married for 1975. When you got back. No, I got back in 1970, spent a couple of years trying to go to college. And Where'd you meet her at? Where'd you meet mama at? I met her in a place called Macmillan's in Conroe, Texas. Oh, in Conroe? Okay, a check. local bar. Is she from there? She is from there. She's fourth generation Conroe. Roger that. I don't think I ever knew that. Yes, yeah, she's fourth generation. Her mom, grandma, and I. She come from no Strickland oil family. Roger that. Yeah. All right. Okay, so y'all got married when? What year? 1975. The year right. you were born. That, yeah, right. Greatest year ever. <laughs> yeah. Talk about it. Yeah. See your Schwarzenegger being yeah. Mr. Olympia, too, if you want to look it up. Yeah. <laughs> big guy over there. Out here. Big guy. <laughs> big boy. I didn't, I didn't realize Tommy's big. My goodness. <laughs> Man, I, I don't know what you, you feed this dude. call him anything now. <laughs> Hell, I'm sitting by him. <laughs> when, when did you start working out, working out? <laughs> uh, I started working out probably when I, when I, I worked out before, of course, I started working out in, in the high school. Sports went college went to college and still worked out when I got in the army and I got back from Vietnam. I didn't get to work out over there, so I pulled the trigger on the better not say that word. And uh, so I, then, then I when I first started, and then I got back and I started going up to the high school because my kid went to work school. That I'd pick up Dodie when she got out of school and she'd ride down to the the workout gym and set the dead gun band till we got there working out. And that's where I saw Scotty because his freshman year of football, he got beat up so bad and was whining and crying about it. 
So I had to slap him one time. I said, look, man, your little bitch ass ain't never going to get run over no more. I got him at 160 pounds, worked out that summer, turned him over to a guy named Coach Stone at 200. How great is that, dude? Yeah. So, so I hadn't seen it. him in forever. That was so, at Willis? Yeah, huh, Willis. Yeah, this is when we, get to, when we moved Stone to Willis. I looked at him, put him on the scales, and looked at me, and he said, my God, what's he doing? I said, shit, don't worry about it, son. How's he look? Said, he we didn't even start growing till our ninth grade year. Yeah, I don't think y'all. I didn't even. I wasn't allowed to play with y'all. Well, I was I was working out at the gym there because I was a taxpayer, and I, I got to work out free. Of course, I had a little football player across the street from me that I'd been with since he's a little bitty kid playing named Scott. So I'd drive him in the ground. He's a firefighter now. Yeah, he's a firefighter. One. I think he's a captain or something mm-hmm. like that now. So I started working out with him in the gym, and these, these two little old guys come along. And back then, they weren't big as a minute. I knew I could push them around, so we started working out. And I'll never forget walking and seeing, hearing you. This is before we started training. Uh-oh. You were just in, in the gym yelling at everybody. Yeah. <laughs> that, you could hear them because Scotty would come out of there. I yeah. remember the diff, the transition from when we were in eighth grade to ninth grade. Right. Seeing him. Yeah. And we were together through the summer, too. Because mm-hmm. we, we, <laughs> he's in there yelling at football players, and then we were in there, because we were on the tennis team, but we were just in there working out. And I remember Which were badasses, though. Yeah. Badass tennis team. And he right. would, he would when he started making Does his that way. Go to <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I man. think I'd have John Andre Agassi. I feel like I threw that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andre Agassi. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 When, when Billy would start making his way to the side of the gym that we were working out, we'd quit what we were doing and go back to the other go side. Yeah. Yeah. Terr- <laughs> terrified. Terrified. Dude, the way he would yell, because Grader's a tough one. Like yeah, he big joked up all those yeah. all the boys that he like Joe Kevin yeah. who were working out Great and they were our badasses. Yeah. To this yeah. day, they're they still our badasses. Some of them, some of them. You could hear him screaming in there, and then he'd be like, "Man, bitch, I freaking this, that, and the other." And then he'd start working his way because he'd make us do stations make the round. Yeah, make the round. <laughs> and anything he made us do, he would do. That was the problem. That I wouldn't ask him to do nothing I couldn't do. I can remember going into the gym. When I pull up and go in the front door, hell, they'd run out. People the back run out. Door. Run out the back they'd run out. They'd run leave. Out. There'd be a room full of people. I'd go in there, and about as soon as I walked in, two or three steps, hell, there ain't four or five guys left. <laughs> I mean, we they was working out one time, and hell, they was doing pretty good. And no, that's not how that happened at all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> was it, I'm was trying that to ever be. Any I'm, trying, I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> there was nothing nice yeah. about it. I was about to figure around this water bottle. We story. had people doing the brain, the skull yeah. crushers. Brain busters. And uh, the door was open. It's hot as shit. Yeah. And uh, he put the stacked that thing with the tens on either side, <laughs> ten, plate, ten pound plates on yeah. either side, like four or five of them. And then put benches on either side so I couldn't dump the weight. Yeah. And I was trying to do those. He he did it first. He got down. He did like fifteen of them, twenty of them. He's like, all right, man, give me like 35. So I started, I did four or five of them and then dropped it on my head. Yeah. And I, I got it down to my chest. I could dump it away. And he could, I mean, I'll never forget this. I was looking up. And he, <laughs> you could, he kind of looked over the top of me. You know, you can just see eyeballs and a nose. Yeah. Oh, People yeah. Do that. You know what I'm talking about? Number breath. Yeah, number breath. And he's like, man, bitch, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I'm trying. I'm like, it's too heavy soup. I can't, I can't lift it. Yeah. And he lifted it up off of me and then it dropped back down. He's like, man, what are you doing? I was like, I can't. I just said, he's like, well, man, bitch, I hope you die. <laughs> and left. He really left me there. That sounds right. Oh, remember that? Oh. No, he was, uh, no, this is in the beginning. The end yeah. Of the yeah. When, are you just training in there? Or are you actually just working out yourself and all these kids are just drawn to you and they want you to work out? Yes. Both. The boat, right? I think initially both. he was in there working out and then he saw how harder we could have worked out and wanted us to be at his level okay and then once a few of the kids got in there and started doing then we just kind of we just funneled in there but the coaches didn't care. they didn't say oh, shit they were all about coaches they say nothing it. yeah they liked it i, I used to go to every football they, practice there was talk shit put on a helmet with stone and want to run down football our coaches <laughs> would beat you to death they'll cuss you oh, yeah at, i mean back in them days they didn't stone care walk in that, that, don't walk damn. in that weight room with the paddle Coach Stone, me, yeah, yeah, yeah. me and your damn. There wasn't no finisher medals back then. Sent, no, huh? No, we were growing up. No, sure they had a paddle. <laughs> and I've seen them line them up in that white room and bust that. I don't know. Dude, I mean, for the probably for the first, I don't know how many months, at the end of the workout, we had to do push-ups. Yes. And not even on flat on the ground, on the bench. Yeah. Remember that? Mm-hmm. And I couldn't do one. 
And I remember Trey and Mojo had me by my head, those Umbro shorts on. Yeah. But then they grabbed me by the it pants. Rip them up. Him up. <laughs> trying to pick me up and do them damn push yeah. Just my arm. And then he kicked me out of the gym. And I'd be sitting out in the yard 10, 15 minutes waiting on everybody. He cussed me from inside. I could hear him talking shit about me. I, that little bitch don't ever let him back in here. Yeah. That's what he say. I remember mean, one time I was working out. <coughs> Mark was down there dude, and had them whites on him. And he hit his chest. He did try to drop off. He's trying to get up. Here come Mojo, Mo, brother Mojo, come over there. I want to pick him up on that end and lift him up to get him up. <laughs> I wouldn't let him. I said, get your he ass caught him. out of here. Caught him trying to save me. He's like, get your ass down there. He said, well, how's it going to get up? I said, shit, I guess it's going to die there. Let's go. <laughs> That's what he said. Hey, hey am I lying? No. It was, it was funny. I don't, I don't. I didn't realize I was that hard on him. <laughs> I just stop. Uh, I thought I was trying to get some potential out of him. <laughs> so this is junior high, high school. Yeah. And then we, when we finished up high school, we all wound up in college together. Yeah. Except, wait a second. So is that how you learned how to work out with someone? No, I you? worked. We started working out with a dude named James Barnum in Vietnam. We had saying shapes, so and we started doing this little workout, and I kind of put some shit together because over there you didn't have nothing. If we was on the base, we we found these old cinder blocks, so that was our weight room. Okay. So, so I started, I just started calling it the soup bone workout. Them them white them cinder blocks kind of grew on me, and it grew on these other boys too because they used to have it's to live like with CrossFit them. before CrossFit existed. Yeah, I can't admit to that being who I am right now. That Boy, I never did CrossFit. I'm sorry, <laughs> I can't do it. Hey, they made it. Oh, well, the, the gym had that first. <clears throat> Yeah, we had the cinder. I still have them out in the property. Really? Like if you drive I, when I walk, I'll say front, hit training. So it's like it was like the original training. high intensity. Yeah, it's a cir- yeah circuit training. training. Yeah. Well, I don't know how when we was working out. Then when we really started working out in my front yard, these guys. I don't know how they got these guys from Sam Houston School to come down with them. They drag one or two guys down here every day. Well, that's how it started. After we graduated from high school, oh, we went to college, yeah. and but we would drive back down yeah, to, to work, work out. out. And when y'all come to my house, want to work out? Angels is that Angels Gate? Angels Gate, bed and breakfast. Yeah, we yeah. had right in the middle of town by that bank. Yeah, that, yeah. They Exit eighty eight. I'll never forget that. Yeah, they. Used this to we'd work. have to get up and go swimming in the mornings, and, and if we'd have to drive forty five minutes or yeah. so to go swimming in the mornings. Then we'd come back, go to school at the end of the, and through the day, and then at the end of the day, we'd have to drive back down to go yep. okay. work out. We were all of us. <laughs> that was everything. They had all, both of them. Had That's what you want to call it. Full time school and two or three jobs. I don't know how we try and three, kill you at the, in the middle of the night, and then we try to heal you. At the yeah. Yeah. The day. yeah. Well, I made them sleep a few nights. I guarantee you. Over there, they screaming they, they, they pretty wore out. Time they left my house. So tell me, what about yeah. you? Where, what about me? When did you come into this? <laughs> did you meet the boys at? Stanford? It was yeah. It was it was uh, the lifeguard. Um, it was one of those things where you had. Uh, Two, I'm, I'm, I'll just say, uh, I'll be humble and say two titans clashing uh, in, in, in Mojo and myself. So, um, you don't like each other in the beginning. At all. At all. Zero. At, uh, I, Matter of fact, nobody liked him. <laughs> yep. See, he did that. He threw that he out was, first. So you're he, of course he did. I, no, to I his, you know, looking back, you know, everybody to liked his me. credit, man, he was, <laughs> he was 100% Marine. And he, he walked it and talked it, lived it, slept it. It didn't matter. And that rubbed people the wrong way at that time. Except for the judge, right? Oh, yeah. Except for other Marines. Yeah, other Marines. Richard Duncan. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, the judge. That's how you got in there, right? Oh, dude. He, cause he was old how re- great was that he man? He was an old recon Marine. Oh, that dude, that dude was... I love that guy. Uh, he, he's like top tier of the individuals I've ever met in my life that I will always hold as pristine high Best regard. dude. Because he gave my job, you know, because uh, I ended up being a gym supervisor. And I was a lifeguard, and then he I also get through, worked he, at Pritchett Field. Point of fact, Tommy had to get through me to because ah, I was leading the tryouts for lifeguarding. That's right, I remember that. Oh yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> and you saw the tattoos all, first. All the other, um, you were already a marine. Yeah, yeah. He had already gone through. He had already gone through basic, and it was first part of OCS. Yeah. And all the other lifeguards that were there were like, "Man, don't hire this dude." And I was like, "Don't worry, he won't get through the. He won't get through the." He ain't gonna do about he won't get through the test, the tryouts, and he smoked everybody in the tryouts. And so our boss, like bad, yeah, bad. It was yeah, that's right. Yeah, right. And um, so our so boss lady, uh, Swingle, Damn, yeah. was like, she was kind of, she wasn't read in on the way the rest of us felt about Tommy. She's like, oh, he's amazing. <laughs> 
That's just, just looking at the numbers, man. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And um, so I hired him, but nobody wanted to work with him because he was just so intense, right? He was that guy. He was the Marine on campus. For those of you who can't see, he has intensity tattooed on his arm. So that's kind of that's what you're biking, doing. Biking, riding. Yeah. Uh, so I, every shift, he worked with me. Every shift. And how it ended up, he was talking about working out and I was talking about working out. And then I told him about Billy. And he was like, I'll go down there with you. And I was like, all right. And he, he did. And he smirked and broke, broke it off. <laughs> broke it off on him. Hey. He kept coming back, though. He's he like, I'll, I'll go we, again. You can tell one thing about my workouts. When these de- de- young guys brought somebody with them. Oh, that was what? the worst. Guess what? If they couldn't do it, guess who had to do it? That was the worst. It was so Dude, bad. We started doing it because we would show up with somebody new when we transferred to college. And then, you know. We'd walk up, and sure enough, Sue laid eyes on him. And then he's like, man, well, on a percentage scale, what do you think you are? I'd always ask him. And we'd always say, man, don't say anything good. Yeah. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> like, man, you know, I'm a We need to tell the immortal Dax story. <laughs> the one, the one. But hold on now. So let, we ain't talking to the other side, of the flip side of that coin, right? Is that I thought this dude, because I, you know, I'd already, you know, already, already cut my teeth in the military, right? And then he, I, I found out that this dude is going to go in the Navy. And of course, you know, there's a good rivalry between, you know, between branches, nice little, you know, throwing jabs at each other. All and the time. That's a thing. All, all the time. All it's the a thing. I mean, it's nothing but love, but I mean, we're going to throw jabs. That's just the way it goes. You talk trash, that means you like somebody, right? But I had this arrogant, cocky dude sitting here thinking he's going to break one off at me. So I was like, all right, there ain't no way I'm going to let this dude do anything to me whatsoever. That gum Navy. He's not want to be Navy. He wasn't even in at the time, you know. And I didn't know that these two guys were like already Delta Tau Delta freaking legends in the Dad Gum uh, Sam Houston. Yeah. You know, I didn't care. What did I? Th- what nobody? These guys weren't going to phase me. I'm just going to keep going. This That's is all I knew. Navy Federal Credit Union would like to thank all of the brave men and women in the U.S. military for their unwavering dedication and commitment to our nation. For over 90 years, Navy Federal has made it their mission to help people in the military community by opening to all branches of the military, veterans, and their families. As a member, you can enjoy plenty of benefits, including a savings rate of four times higher than the industry average and award-winning 24-7 stateside service. Show your own support for our troops with hashtag Mission Military Thanks. And... Since it's Military Appreciation Month, I would like to give a very special shout out to my pops, Marcus, for his hard work and sacrifice while fighting for our country. You can learn more about how Navy Federal is celebrating the commitment that connects them to their members at NavyFederal.com. Mid-90s, too, when we were going through all this. <laughs> that helps anybody, right? Yeah. What the atmosphere is like? Yeah. I feel that it does. It right? was a bit yeah. competitive. Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 we were right in that transitional period. <laughs> it was, man. But was. but but the thing is, is that he tried to scare me on the way down. He, you know, on the way, he just like, he's just, oh, man, this thing's coming. You ain't going to understand. It's going to be like a bulldog coming out. Oh, You're going to just giving you the rules. It was like, hey, if we go, if we, if we actually go down together, up together. If you can't do it, I carry it for you. If I can't do it, you carry it for me. Don't ever say, don't yeah. come back. I'll just do that shit. Yeah. yeah, but okay, he was setting a pretty good smoke screen. I first understand too. what it's like. I, I live with it. Because he, it. Like, he did. And, you know, it, it was you like. You weren't some, trying to scare me, but. Something, <laughs> something of lore, <laughs> of legend. He's like, don't worry, man. You'll see these angels. It's not that right? not, not helping me, but yeah. you're not. These, they're ghost see these angels but they're gonna grow horns by the end of the by the end of the work <laughs> yeah. don't you worry about it and you'll see this big old bulldog don't worry, don't look at him in the eye yeah. don't look at him in the eye the place just, is called angel's gate don't yeah. let that get to you and breakfast yeah. yeah but it and it was just one thing after the other and he came out and i remember it was just two words that billy's told me that was my introduction it wasn't hey how are you i'm billy or nothing like that he looked at me and goes you ready and I looked over at Morgan. He goes, he, I see him with that little sarcastic smile he's got, you know, like all oh, his boys about to get some, you know. <laughs> and then, and then, uh, but he knew also bringing a new guy. And I come to find out later, you know, that the new guy, you know, I guess uh, rite of passage or whatever would always be going through there, and it was always a harder workout because he wanted to take the screws to him to make sure they got it. And they wanted to come back, and they were worth his and the rest of our time. So, yeah, that first workout was. Awful. <laughs> Awful. Awful. I thought it was good. He'd man. always say, he's like, man, can this can this dude go? Yeah. That's what he'd say. He's like, man, can this guy go? And then asking so. us. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. So you know. it was like an initiation workout. Well, if you oh, bring them. freaking worse. And, and I would, I, I'd ask everybody, man, on a scale of 110, where you at, brother? I, I need to know, man. So I, 
Wow, all right. Yeah, but it's his scale, not his scale. Not he, would, he would always lead them. He's like, he well, beat the shit out of him, like, too, man. <laughs> He's like, are you, are you, you, think, are you strong? He's like, yeah, I'm pretty strong. He's like, can you run? Weak as cat piss, can you, right? can you do some push-ups? Yeah, I can knock out some push-ups. And can you run? Yeah, I can run. He's like, all right, here's what we're going to do. We'll knock out 175 straight by, by 25 each, 30 seconds in the rest position, knock 175 out, and then we're going to go on a little run with a block. And nobody ever expected the, the rock. Freaking rock. Right? Man, so you're running with a center block. You never go anywhere without your blocks or your tires. Yep. And Pain that's lizard. where it separated – for people, yeah, I can run. Equal out. I can do push-ups. Can you do it all together? And it was just start to finish nonstop. You didn't. There were, if you're resting, you're resting in a push-up position. If you're on your back, you're resting. You're holding the block above your head. You know, it's just even the water breaks your legs extended. There's even constant, the water breaks yeah, hard. Yeah, the water. We were do he. There was a there was a spigot about maybe a foot and a half that was curved over, and he'd be like, "Y'all go get a drink of water." And if you you better run to it, the, you know, and both oh, yeah, you run everywhere. You have to run everywhere. Don't you? That's fucking run everywhere. No. And you run to it and you pretty much are diving under the water because you only got so much time. And the, the spigot oh, looked like a short, cold dick hanging out of the wall, dude. So <laughs> none of us could get to the motherfucker, right? Dude, it was just <laughs> oh, it was a it's the closest you ever come to kissing a man. Oh, dude. I mean, we're running. They're talking about dudes that are oh, a water break. You came in for military. We yeah. all did. David, you came in for what? He was going hunting. He was going on a hunt yeah, with his buddy hunt. somewhere. That yeah, first for a North backpack Texas. sheep hunt up in the Yukon. Okay, so when you came in, you're, where were you born? 75. Where? Where? Conroe. Right. Born in Conroe. That's right. Raised in Conroe. Whole, yeah, that, that's, we hadn't left that. The family's all there and everything. You came into the, when did you meet Soup? Was, it, was that the first time? That was the first time I came over with McGee. McGee uh, got you. McGee got me in. Yeah, we were, we were doing some. Vanilla. The world hadn't met Andrew yeah. yet. We hadn't introduced him. Mother <laughs> Goose, he's coming. I was That's just a multi part. Yeah, yeah, he's he's coming. Y'all enjoy That's him. That's good. He's Best fun. storyteller on the planet of Earth. Yeah. I, he got to hold you at the bar. Yeah, he got to hold me at the bar, and they told me I couldn't do it. So That's I, how. I, I, That's how we get you. Yeah. And so, anyway. There I was. I, I was talking earlier when we when we left there, and my phone rang. Rooney was calling to see if I made it, and uh, I couldn't get to the phone, so I had to lean my head over going to the phone. I couldn't raise the phone to my ear, but I lived. That was the main thing. Tell, uh, tell about what Nathan. Oh man, so, uh, it, that, so there was this one kid. So we always brought multiple guys coming. Yeah, to to bring practice. somebody. You in. Always, you always you bring, never wanted to, but you kind of like hey, it, uh, because they always wanted to know where we one where we got the attitude because the. The three of us at school, I mean, it would, I might as well have been, we all was, might, might, must have been twins, had to have been, all of us, or triplets, or whatever you call it, right? Because they always had the three of us together, but we all had the same attitude, the same flair, we talked the same, walked the same, and they want to know, what the heck, why is it like that? Even when we're apart, we're like, you sound just like the other one, you know? And I, it's not like we were born that way, it's because we just got made that way. You know, um, and it was just it was it was the intensity. It was the, the the brotherhood, the camaraderie, the culture that was promulgated all then and there. So anyways, you had it was like almost like a gang, you know, uh, but we, we always bring guys in and we brought this one cat in and uh, he was going to the Marines. And uh, he was going through kind of the similar. Route yeah, we got route. guys from across the board. We just yeah. don't have seals or no, anything. no, not at all. I, some people happen to do both because they can't figure out what they want to do in life. You know what I'm saying? Um, but no, we've had army guys, you know, come through. Uh, we've had other fire, 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 firefighters, fire, all, all kinds of types, all types yeah. of boxers guys. and hunters. And yeah, yeah, boxers, hunters. It don't matter. You didn't. It just all you had to do was have the heart to keep going and then be able to survive the culture. You had to, have, you had to know somebody there. Yeah, that's absolutely. How, that's, if you want to it was by invite only. Yeah, by invite only. Yeah. 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 Exactly. When we brought this kid in and uh, he, we you know, turned the screws on him the first workout, and uh, he's a skinny old little kid. But on a scale run. of one to ten, Dude, what are you? Yeah, scale one to ten. Don't ever say anything above a five. <laughs> no, ever, ever. But the funny I thing is, is that, is that I, Billy always gave negative numbers every time. Oh, it's the worst, Every dude. always, you a minus 500, bitch. Or whatever. <laughs> go home to your daddy. And, that, that, oh, that's man. it. Go cry any cornflakes. I don't want to hear it. Just quit and go. You, wherever you wanted to go, don't do it anymore. <laughs> so this kid, anyway, gets the screws turned on him uh, by, by Billy. I take off. Uh, you know, and Billy's about, you know, getting ready for dinner or whatever with Miss yeah. Diane and uh, looks out his window and his kid's car is still there. I mean, it's like 20 minutes, you know, and uh, he goes out there and the kid's just sitting there like right this. And, and he goes, man, you Hunched, okay? hunched over with his hands hunched down. Hunched over with his hands down like this. And he's like, and Billy goes, hey, man, you, you okay? You all right? You keep going? He's like, oh, yeah, I feel great. He goes, well, what are you doing? He goes, I can't lift my arms to drive. <laughs> <Start> <laughs> truck. I can't even start my truck. Can't so he's got a call. Go ahead. I had to call him in Huntsville. Took him, he'd been gone 20-something minutes. 
I, I said, uh, Pack Mule, man. I said, he said, what's the matter, Soup? I said, shit, you got to come get your buddy. Why? Hell, he can't drive. <laughs> He's like, come get this bitch out of my yard. <laughs> come come scoop him off the pavement. Like, Just get everybody, everybody shovel. Everybody was a bitch. Oh, my God. I remember getting the, this is back when the phone was still connected to the wall, too, man. I, I couldn't reach the phone. And my hands were like, can't get off the toilet. You know, you can just like. <laughs> this is the worst. Oh, yeah, we always talk about shower. Oh, the shower man. with the two hands. Yeah, bending over. Yeah. <laughs> I remember one Somebody time after we worked out, like doing, I was doing like something. That. Mojo and Marshall was already home after a workout. Probably 30, 20, 30 minutes, I went over to do something. They're laying in the damn floor in the den like this. <laughs> <laughs> Mama's over there baby in their ass. <laughs> well, there's his arms hurting and sore, and then you can't feel them. Yeah. It's just that they don't. No. Kind of like, it's, it's failure. It's the weirdest thing. I never experienced it anywhere you, else. You figured out what failure yeah, was. Yeah. You know, we all laugh about that workout, but it is probably brutal. I think so, I no the biggest, the biggest takeaway it. from the workouts because no matter how you showed up or what shape, you'd eventually get us there. Oh, yeah. You're stuck with it. It oh, was yeah. it was the Pretty mental quick. game. Yes, that what that separated everything. Every other workout we'd ever done, it was the the mental anguish that you put us through. But we did it together, right? That's right. And Dang. that's that is watching somebody else. That was the best. Like you didn't want to bring anybody, but if you did, you knew they were going to get it. Oh, bad. But then you were also going to get it with him. For, yeah. I mean, the, the, the comedy in that. Oh. <laughs> because everyone's so different. And when, when everyone is different and you're suffering together, you want to talk about it. And if one of your buddies came down and they were and they were struggling and failing, it, you, it always puts you in a position that you had to help them. Like like yeah. moving forward in, in, in the military. Yeah. Like if somebody, at the, if there was a weak link, you were forced to get down there and get them. And you, since you taught us that at such an early age, the, the transition into the military was just... It was seamless. Yeah, I mean, how many times I had a hand so, on my belt pulling up and doing push ups, man. When, um, when you were really hard on them, telling them that their, you know, mama shouldn't have birthed them and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> did. <laughs> no, that's I mean, not so nice of terms. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> did. I remember looking over something like, what did you say? Yeah. I don't even know what that well, means. Well, they always. Cat, <laughs> yeah, what's speak, a cat? What the hell does that even mean? <laughs> they always speak about your wife in tears, in terms of endearment. Was she always the opposite of you? Just kind. And- oh yeah, she come out there. Oh, man, great. it was hot. She come out with lemonade. Oh, yeah. that nice picture come out with yeah, two yeah. glasses, man. Uh-huh. And man, she said, Billy, you're going to kill these guys. Now I ain't going to kill her ass. She brought this piece. We had this whole chicken, rotisserie chicken she brought out, like you get from Boston uh, Market or something yeah. like that, in the little container and yeah. put it on the grass for us. We went after that thing. Like, like whoa. You couldn't even believe it. <laughs> man, they're fighting over that. Yeah. yeah. Like he purposely that. trained us like that. Mahoney attacked that damn Mahoney thing. And John, whatever his name was, coming to this all wizard. And that's when Larry was, we were in the push up, was just Larry kept throwing up on the back of my neck. Oh, he was and, 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 and Sue was like, Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Larry. And just yeah. kept that was miserable. Like, that, that was a workout, wasn't it? it was a workout. Thank you, Larry. It became a workout. Larry is shooting his running down my driveway to the damn road. The hardest dude on the planet of Earth. David, you, you advise this? Larry Furman, right? Yeah. Has to be. And Morgan. Torture, Tor- beat dude. the snot out of Every yeah. time yeah. I say Mark, I said, Oh my god, you're gonna hurt this kid, boy. Oh man, he didn't care, he'd show back yeah. up. He loves it. He, he got the freaking grit. He was a master. He, he could take pain like nobody. Is he still been. living? Yeah, he's alive. Yeah. <laughs> he's, 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 really. he's doing great, actually. His kids <laughs> in select ball, he's, he's you know, yeah. he's married to Shelly, so that saved his life. You know, she's the how great is she, right? Yeah, yeah, and then um, Taylor and uh, Jagger, you know, they're great. He's he's good, unchanged, he's gotten older. I guess he has changed. You can't say it. Well, it yeah. like Jack was kind of starting to take his spot on being the prankster and all of that. Yeah. If Larry gets back half of what he dished out, y'all Ooh. know what that's going to look like. <laughs> bad, bad. 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 I remember one time Mark brought this kid down. And Mark, Mark and I got to say, he was getting in pretty damn good shape. He brought this kid down. He was a total shit case. And there's on them blocks doing push up. Morgan was resting. He's in that push-up position doing. You can see them arms second, and this kid trying to do them push-ups. He'd get down. He couldn't hardly get up. Morgan looked at me, looked at him, and said, "You do these push-ups, I'm gonna whoop your ass." <laughs> the worst. Remember that? He he did, did, did the freaking guy who showed up had born to kill tattooed yeah. on his body before he had even been in the military, yeah. and he couldn't do nothing. Yeah, but Billy wouldn't let him leave. Yeah, and we had to sit there and do all of that. For, I don't know how many hours it took us to knock all that stuff out. Well. We worked as a team. Everything we did, we did as a team. So if we're all doing, we're doing push-ups, hell, I'd get down to do push-up too, and I'd count them. 
you get out of sync as well. We're gonna start over. I don't know how many times we start over one day. Every day. It's just yeah. it's just robotic though. But it's it's weird happened, how it all happens though. Instead right? of twenty five, we ended up doing hundred and fifty. And that's like a word that one set. But so for our listeners that are super interested in working out and all of that, what is a typical soup bone workout? Misery. Well, that was, I think that was, yeah, the, that was, the, that was, was so special, but it was never the same. Oh. There were certain things you could guarantee. No, you didn't. Well, we had our blocks. Yeah. It was just what we had to I do. Mean, everything was a warm up. So you always had to warm up. So we was warming up on push ups. And it, 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 it's, it was very methodical Top about it. So we'd start out the stretching I mean, was, and everything was a test initially. But as we progress, he progressed. So yeah. you're like, all right, hey, we're going to warm up. We're going to, we're doing 200 push ups for warm up. Just to warm the chest up, you're on your blocks or you're on the chair, but you can't come out of this position. So you knock out 25 or 35, you come up and you hold it for 30 seconds, and then you knock it out again. And then after you do that, you immediately transit no rest. That without, was, without the block. That was yeah, the, do it again. That was the yeah, kicker. That, that was, was no rest. Was killer, man. Yeah, you talk about the evolution of it, right? So I remember one time when it was, it was me and Mojo for the longest, right? And uh, Marcus that's because my badass already been through there, chump. Oh, right. What happened when you came yeah, back? Like what, happened, what happened when you came back? What happened when you came? Ca- We're not we'll talking that about story. that. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll get I to that slipped in a up a little. We'll right, get to that in a minute. We'll get to that in a minute. Like that. No, but the warm ups. What I was saying though was it graduated with me and Mojo to to uh, it was like seventy five Tybo high knees four count. Remember murders? Yep. Remember those? So he yep, so he'd yep, have yep. us. He'd have these these uh, double set of uh, like red bricks, and it would be like down and backs. To uh, the different the different uh, driveways, right? Any different driveways, it's down and back, down and back, yeah. and then I'd have he put the tailgate down, and Mojo would be and w- while one guy's running, the other, the other dude had his foot in an incline with his feet on a tailgate, and then on the block. Yeah, but he was resting. But then he's barking orders at us. Yeah. yeah. So like he's like, hey, you go down and touch the the, the, the pole, but you have you have to run around it. Mm-hmm. And if you went down there and didn't do what he told you, you we all have to start over. Mm-hmm. Well, if you remember correctly, we was all out there. We had them new guys too, and y'all was wore out. We, we had a pretty rough workout. And we're getting close to the end. I said, hey, guys, you see that stop sign about two blocks down there? It's probably three or four blocks. I said, y'all run down there. When you hit that stop sign, come on back. I said, do you understand? I, 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 oh, that's, yeah, I always like, ask that. I always ask, do you understand what I'm saying? Pay attention. Little things that kill you. Do, do you understand? He would ask yeah, me. I'll never forget that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we got, got it. it. We got it, so, <laughs> Uh-huh. Sure. <laughs> hey, what do they do? They go down there. They go around it. Here they come back. They really like a possum meat and shit when they got to me. I got to none, of hit, none of them. No, they didn't hit it. Hell, they walked around it and come he, back. He, he I said, guess what? It. Bitch, I'm going you, again. Did you Why? say you understood what I said? Then he would start, start day over. Oh, yeah. Mail that Whole day, Whole day over. They didn't hit that stop. Say, I ain't got nothing did to I say do. hit the stop? That's time. right. I got nothing but time. I got nothing but time. Because if you, it's, it's all about if you're showing up late, you miss your ride. If, you, if, it, if you're not paying attention to detail, somebody dies. Yeah. Right. So if we all showed up late one down. time. We're all hung over. All the Green yeah. Berets were in town. Yeah. Some rain, all yeah. of us. All the boys, all the boys in were in town. for their homies. When we yeah. would come home off leave and everything, so the Thornberries would show up, we'd put out a call. This and, is while y'all are already in the team. Yeah, we're, we're, we're active team. duty. That's yeah, we're, we're in the back. team. We're, we're, we're coming back. But when we would come back, we'd always bring people. Yeah. And then, then the guys that we had brought before, so they come in from different states. I don't know how it worked out, but we would, man, there'd be a mess yeah. of us here. 10, 12 of us just having a ball. And we'd Billy, always show Nate Billy, like, y'all want to work out in the morning? He'd find out we were here. He's like, what y'all doing? Oh, you know, we just, <laughs> oh, good. You'll be here for a workout then. Yeah. Yeah. See you at seven. Seven. <laughs> we, we, get, we leave the bar, you know, around three. Six. Yeah. And then rubber band man yeah. comes out. I'm already in. No, no we can't. No, no, no. We, no. we showed up late one time. Yeah. God, he whipped us so bad. <laughs> I was even—I was throwing up bad that day. All of them. Everybody was Pete, Chase, all of them. Pete and Bear, and, Bear and all that stuff. Hours. Stupid rubber band too. Oh, yeah, yeah. They were all trees sick. that burn. Want me to have them? The chair, the the iron chair, the iron chair. And then he had the—he found that had to railroad tie. Yeah. We started working out with that, and then the uh, the the uh, what was it? The wheelbarrow full of rocks. Yeah, you got to run with. The- oh, I remember. Yeah, David, fill, yeah. fill it up. Uh-huh. Let's go. Catapult it over. Freaking yeah. catapult over it. Yeah. He's never seen a human yeah. being catapult hey. over the front of a wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> that's something like that. Oh, yeah. 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 I passed the training on. I, yeah. You know, I, oh, I, just passed yeah, I, 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 I trained him. He's good. Yeah. What, I mean, to, he made Hunter do wheelbarrow with rocks in wheelbarrow. the freezing rain. Like, this is right. Oh, flat tire. He had a flat tire. January. Yeah. I can get right. it. Yeah. 
It and didn't rain on us, never. He was in high school. We, I was like, shit. Okay. <laughs> we, I remember we were in Virginia, had a two foot of snow on the ground. I got a, what, 4,000 square foot house? I made my kid bear crawl in the snow around the house because he made, did something wrong, but you know, messing with his mama. And he didn't go fast enough, so I made him do it again. Yeah, but he, yeah. but if I tell you what, the kid's tough as nails now. Yeah, that's how I discipline too. What yeah. I do for a workout. Yeah. I mean, I just made my kid work out. Absolutely, so, works every time. But I mean, to answer time. your question about the regular workout, there was always some sort of a dynamic effort uh, warm up, right? That got us all warmed up. It wasn't too intense unless we made him mad or we were out, got out of sync or something like that. Then it was usually something with the with the brick where we do squats, we do overhead press. Oh, um, he'd right. have us on the back holding the rock with doing flutter kicks. Um, and then the, the, the insurmountable amount of push-ups, which that's one thing that I really respect about this guy right here. You too, you had it when you came back. Yeah, is I, I, I've never seen a human become a machine uh, in, in push-ups because I always struggled because I, always had, I was always heavier. And I guess I just didn't have that strength or whatever. But I, it's like you, you couldn't... He, Nobody could outpush more ever. I, I, I would have people come up and like say, I dare you to try to do more push ups than this guy. But as soon as he got on that rock, it's like this thing went off in his head and he goes, I'm just going to keep going at the same pace and you're going to catch me or not. So when you were boxing, Trent David, training for the Olympics and doing a lot of stuff like that, that was before when we were, we were. Yeah, I quit boxing in 2000 and then that was like 01. We were 01, 02 when I was training with y'all. Man, speaking of David, man, I remember one time talking to your dad after you'd been working out with us and everything. His dad told me, and they, he said, I paid a lot of money to get my son in shape, but he ain't never been in the kind of shape you've got him in. Did he say that? Oh, for sure, yeah. He yeah. said, my son never been in shape you put him in. Well, we I still do big. this stuff together. He's like, da David threw a race the other day right after, during quarantine. Right. Like, we'll do a center block yeah, run. We got a race coming up the Red Wing. Yeah. <laughs> we still meet once or twice a year and do these stuff. Do well, stuff I need to come other. to another one. I've been to one. Oh, it's it's – the thirtieth of June, we're doing a we're doing an Olympic try in my in the neighborhood. Oh man, I got I got to be there. I, I turned should be interesting. <laughs> yes, yeah. sir. Well, you know you can't push on them too hard. Hell, they've done their they've done their duties. So. So you're still training though. Well, you know if I got a good one, man. But the, some of these kids because we're not bringing anybody in. Nah, good. Like. Good, like I said. <laughs> yeah. good. Well, we're all getting a little older, man. I don't know if we can go with that. I remember when we were training. kids, you said that when we were done, like after we trained yeah. and we went to war, we came back when we were older, we, that we would all just sit on the front porch and drink sweet tea. Right. He did say that a lot. Remember that? He said that a lot. Always said that. Yeah. He never we, thought he'd come. I didn't either. He's like, if we made it back. Yeah, we're going to sit there. Because all of our guys are busted as shit. Yeah. yeah. Everybody in our crew, yeah. this well, sucker yeah. especially, Mojo, Tommy's the worst, probably got the worst. At all of us, or I don't know, Bragg got it pretty bad. Yeah. There's there's a few of us that got it pretty bad, right? Yes. But we all made it back to drink sweet tea on the front porch. I'll never forget you saying say all the time. So how has that been? All of the guys that you've put through that have actually gone to the military, have you followed all of their careers? Well, you know, I I, I try to you know follow them, but it seemed like besides my my kid, these are my kids. Mm -hmm. They die out. I don't look at them like a Marine or a, or a Navy SEAL or a hunter. They're they're my kids. I mean, I love them. Mm -hmm. I love these guys with my heart and soul, and I think I'm, he's not just a person. That He's my son. He's my son. He's my son. He's my son. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting older, you know, but they're still my kids. I, it don't make a shit if you're 70 and I'm a hunter. They're my kids. Yeah. You know, and I just – you fall in love with them because when you – when you do this and you got a certain group of kids that's in your stable that you're working with, you hear everything that's good and everything, most shit that's bad about school, family, work, study, this, or you, you, you have to, you have to mentor them all the way from the bottom to the top to send them on their way. Because what's my God, what's going to happen if I send these guys off to work overseas and one of them gets hurt? Mm -hmm. Well, shit, that, that's basically my, my fault. I didn't get him ready. Yeah. And, man, you know how long I would have to cry and, and die at night if that happened? Speaking of, what was it like when Red Wing went down man, that, from your perspective? Right before he went, I was working for KBR overseas. I'd gone to Kandahar. I think we wanted to have supper that Friday night. We was going to try to. And, man... This is no shit, man. About two to three days before this happened, 
I woke up one morning to go to work and I got this feeling that come over my heart that I knew something was wrong. Something ain't something drastic has happened. And I went and I went right there and quit. And they flew me home the next morning. Well, come to find out in, in the Hindu Kush, markets come up missing. Mojo had got a hold to me, said, asked me if I could get out to the ranch. I said, yeah, I'll go out there with my ass. But you can ask anybody here that was out there. I told him exactly what happened, how he was traveling down the mountain, where he got hurt, pointed to my hip where he got shot, and told him exactly how he survived. And when he got back, I told him, y'all don't have to worry, man. We ain't heard from him, but he's alive. I know, I know, you know, I know it in my heart. I, I could see him in my vision. I know this is weird. Probably ain't nobody that believe me anyhow. That's I'm about sure. it. I remember hearing that. But I, I did. I told him exactly where you got hit, how you got it, how you got, how you survived, and how you come home. And uh, I remember, I remember when one night when I was sleeping in bed, them boys come up, shook my toe, and told me that for me to talk to Marcus and tell him none of this was his fault, that we love him and we're okay. And I, and I think I told Marcus Axis and. Danny Dates. A lot of the guys told me that story when, when I got back, or actually when I was in the hospital. They yeah. They shook my toe, got me by the big toe. My, do my dog was growling. And they, I know this sounds crazy, but they shook my toe. And I sat up in bed and saw them. They, and that's what they told me. You tell Marcus we love him, and now this is his fault. Mm -hmm. And man, I, from that day on, I had peace. You know, I, that, uh, my, my heart laid down and I could rest. Were you there? There was, a lot of people at the ranch. About um, 200. Yeah. Were you one of them? I <laughs> was on beginning. Yeah. 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 Can't believe who shows up, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, can't believe it, right? Hey, oh, man, what's, there about to, what's there about to stay my, down? Yeah, I was my. upset I wasn't there. Yeah, you did a good job. Because <laughs> who showed up? Yeah. There were about 200 people out there night and day. An <laughs> Outback Steakhouse showed up. Yeah. Mr. Came, they, they brought some them? stuff out. I remember Feed. once you did show up, freaking mama on the porch with a shotgun and a six run shooter, girls off. run everyone off. Everyone, yeah. She goes, "If you ain't a Navy SEAL, yeah. if you're a local, get out." And I remember it was it was the three of us and JJ. Yeah, she's not afraid. She's not afraid. She's not afraid of that yeah. No, mama was on point. point she yeah. stayed up all night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's pretty crappy. Might have been getting a little rowdy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, noise disturbance I mean, or something. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah, but we had, we had some we had some stuff to do. I mean, everybody ever worked out with this that made it that developed into grown man yeah well the best is that it, once he hands it to you you got to hold on to it yeah because i came back after that first appointment tommy yeah. brought it up excuse me you're welcome and i i had mom's cooking i remember the first of the war kicked off you know my bro yeah. was yeah. all, the, all the guys around i got out of shape man showed up for a workout what like 10? i remember telling my dad he's still <laughs> alive he's like you need to go work out with soup mother guy and I showed up over there about 30 minutes later. I come back home. It's about a 25 minute drive, too. Yeah. That makes you know I mean? And I mean, he wanted to kick, cuss me up once for being out of shape. I'll never forget. He's like, man, bitch, I thought I trained you better. And I was like, oh, dang. Well, I was expecting, man. He's like, I was no. expecting him to come back off cuss. Well, after way he's saying, well, like, well, what oh, man. Shape is and he come back, he's a little stuffy and fluffy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Shit. What happened here? Hey, oh, your bridge is hanging. I mean, for the next two weeks, I was in the, every like, day. I was like, I come over here wearing them. Game time. Man. I was on that back at it. Or post deployment leave, too. Yeah. Right? You know, <laughs> but I couldn't even run back at it. Oh, I, I know it. I, I shouldn't have <laughs> went over that asshole's house. <laughs> right, yeah. Damn it. I hate his ass. Oh. God, great, great. I remember even looking in the mirror. I was like, look how that thing folds over like that. It had been the first time my belly had done that. And I was like, kind of like that a little bit, man. Shit. Yeah. Suit didn't like that at all. Yeah, it funny. I remember we used to work out. Damn phone. Scott Gravity used to work out and he'd be in there in the gym and he'd be working real hard and I was trying to get him in shape and about three, four through the deal. He'd he'd get mad because I was cussing him, he'd cuss me. He said, You know what, Superman with this somebody tell I'm a whoop your yeah. ass. I said, That's cool. No problem, buddy. But in the meantime, you do what the hell I tell you. I'd wear his ass out so bad that when it was over, he couldn't do nothing but pout and get in the van and me drive him home. Yeah, but I he said, looked he looked good though. That dude, yeah. you got him. Woo. Man, they called him the rock. Man. Yeah, he was that's God. a bitch was tough. He was that, tough. Is, that was the only time I ever seen Mojo flex in the mirror. <laughs> let's, let's talk about that a little bit, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I remember he came in. He was in there flexing. 
freaking Miss Diane. He goes, look what your look what your husband has created. I'm like, you idiot. <laughs> you I, I just put that out in the world. Knows yeah, that right now. Oh. Oh. I'm not even in a birthday card, yeah. bro. Is you in front? Me in front of the mirror. <laughs> so uh, who has all of these pictures of this time frame? Yeah, sure. I got quite a few workouts, yeah. different kids, and different workouts. And I got one where Furman threw it up all over his shirt. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what's it like for you to have all these years have gone by and now look at everybody. Everybody's still talking to each other. Morgan is a congressman now. I mean, I that's got to be such a neat feeling for you that you've what had a part in raising all these people. Tommy's still in the military. Hey, um, a Marine, then a SEAL. Yeah. We'll get there in just a minute. But, I mean, just for you. Oh, it makes my heart so proud I could cry. I lay in bed sometimes think about these kids and I just cry. Because, you you know, you they overwhelm me with everything. There's still a little bit. Some of them still a little bit. He gets a little bit intimidating. He gets with them <laughs> black eyes. And he When he gets all shitty. And he, he intimidates. I had a hard time there for a while. You know, because... Man, I want to do this, and they actually didn't want to do it because it hurts so bad. But, you know, if you do this, I promise you're going to hate me now, but you're going to kiss me when this is over, buddy. Yeah. Because I'm going to drag you across the finish line. It sure as heck brought a crowd, that's for sure. Huh? Yeah. That brought a crowd. But, but can you just imagine if they hadn't gotten that kind of shape mm-hmm. and could do what they're doing and went in? Yeah, they've got run home, and then it's my fault. Yeah. I remember one of the first times I met you, you told me, that no matter what you put Marcus through or any of the guys, they would just wouldn't quit. They would keep coming you back. And quit. it was the guys, all of y'all, that kept yeah. coming back. And that's really all it takes is just the heart and the determination that you're going to get better each day. It sucks in the moment. Yeah, yeah. But that willpower. You know, something and- you have to develop in their soul and mind and body. But it, <laughs> it's not going to get easier. It's going to get better. Because, it, you know, when, when all this started, like when David come and everybody showed up, man, that first month is just miserable. You hate you hate me. You hate you, you don't even like to see my place. You hate the rock. You hate everybody. <laughs> Everything that's associated with me, they hate. Oh, oh, this is the worst. If you started and didn't show up, he'd catch you in town. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like you'd be at a restaurant somewhere and say, hey, bitch, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my line, David, I mean, from across the thing, man, be trying to duck him, like, oh, shit. Oh, hell, but Dave. the thing is, is that we'd call each other because we didn't want, we didn't want to stop. Oh, dude, we like, he's like, hey, man, I don't yeah, know about go. you, but I'm like really sick. I can't come out. I feel like such a Dying. win. I'm such a win. And then I'd always get it from one of you two. It was like, you freaking pussy. Yeah. <laughs> you, <laughs> Morgan <laughs> caved his ankle in half, right? Remember? Yeah. Broke yeah. it yeah. completely. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, well, just, just grow it back together and let's go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Screw it back okay. together. Screw it back what together. Do you mean, go. Bro, I remember I gave him a try to two of them. Oh, yeah. When he opened his eyes. He's right there. I remember, I remember pulling up on the front porch and we see Superman coming off the front porch. It's going to be a good day today. Oh, oh it's the worst. It's a good day like, today. Good mood. <laughs> yeah. No, that was bad, but Screaming Eagle was worse. Yeah. Dude, he, he come out He come out with this really just, just nasty looking smile and just flapping his arms. And you knew that you were, oh, yeah, you better, right. yeah, oh, yeah. You better <laughs> strap one in. And if Screaming Eagle, what it was is, is that we don't work out until somebody passes out or pukes. Somebody got that was it. That, that was the only way we could stop. What got you into that? Like, what made you think I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna flap my arms and do this uh, until you know, you know, I'm so <laughs> shit that he just comes up. Dude, I mean, that's that's I come up. Hey, you gotta realize, you that, man. Crazy, How did you even, yeah. where'd yeah. you watch that to talk to me like that? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. He brought the he's got a daughter. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know what I'm talking about. This sadistic dude walks out of the porch and just brings the hammer to us, right? And the daughter's yeah. sitting back there, she's beautiful and great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't, uh, don't you just get on me constantly. Dad, you're going to kill them boys. They ain't never going to talk to you again in their life. <laughs> I said, well, I said, shit, you know what? If I can get them through this, it's okay. Come well, other, that way, we still all love Other each people other. would talk. Those people that would stare at us from the bank. bank. It's like a four story bank. And they would take their coffee and lunch right. breaks and come they over and watch. Slide, him, to him, him Slide to the window. Slide to the window. I mean, they're exactly. sucking window, you know, it's looking it's to see building what he's going to do. Yeah, big yeah, building. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Just a look. Hey, we, we, yeah, we had seven cars stopped out there one day. Yeah. Please come by. What are you doing to that? Asking what he's doing to him. What they do? He thought he was starting a cult. Yeah, the cops. What they do for you to do? Or a militia. 
Hell, yeah. we got that pole running down the road, and I'm hollering, running with some. Yeah, this is in a neighborhood. Away. This is like in a, yeah. in a neighborhood in the in downtown. Dude, yeah, right, right, remember right, the, 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 the uh, what was it? The railroad tie at the church. Yeah, remember that one? Oh man, that was a run. It was brutal, that man. was a we'd long stop run. traffic. We'd always stop. Gonna, traffic. He, you and I were gonna have to carry that telephone pole to Del Lago. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Twenty five miles. <laughs> <laughs> 25 <laughs> miles carrying damn pole, man. Telephone pole down, down, down one on the freeway. Yeah. Oh my God. I like they're up. Yeah. Yeah. He's well, they talk shit, man. Or See, how? yeah, that's what would happen. Well, we started getting, getting good. Getting good. He's they like, thought, I got something thought, for you. Yeah, because there's only so much you could stick it in the hour or that we were there, right? Unless he was punishing us. That's right. And yeah. then, so we'd all, once we got strong enough yeah. to do all that, maybe, which we eventually did, start getting cocky. Yeah. Yeah, we start getting cocky, and he's like, okay, watch this. Yeah. I got oh, there was I got always some, another gear. Another I got gear, something man. just for you, baby. I'm for yeah. it and the thing is, he'd find, a, he'd find a weakness in oh. one of us and then capitalize yeah, the other guy's strength. Yeah, yeah. It's like he could do push ups for days. I'd start hurting, but then he could run. Then the yeah, run would come. I could run forever. That was But if you remember when we first started, man, and Marcus was starting, he had a he had a what a six month time. Yeah. Limit. Okay. So when your window came oh. down, then it switched. Your workout switched. Yeah. yeah. You had to show up more days. And yeah. It was, a, it was tough, man. It was. But he you couldn't feed him enough. I call it feeding him. You couldn't feed him enough fast enough to get him where he wanted to go. He he should have given me a year. You couldn't get in shape in six months hardly. Yeah. It takes a while. Yeah. But man, I had I had to overload on his ass, and they had to pay. For it's the mental game. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> the, the, imagine the, the only way you can teach us mentally was to beat us physically. Like that's that, it. that. That's what I. Yeah. Our training, the pillar you are in my life is my mental capacity. Yeah. So, it was so physical that it was mental. And yeah. I did. I remember. I remember calling him after Hell Week because I'd I'd broken uh, my pubic rami bone, my pelvis, like in half. The Thursday before Hell Week, yeah, and I had too. yeah, and I had to go, and I went into Hell, Hell Week. Fuck like me too. Yeah, until so, I broke my pelvis. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? That's yeah. not gnarly. That so, place so it's just like you know, you know what, man? It's just like you didn't get enough soup bone. Now I'm going to break a bone. Now you're yeah, going to go through Hell Week with a broken bone. Yeah. And I remember he was in the back of my head. It was like God on one side and soup bone on the other, and th- both of them were just hollering at me to keep going. And then I see them, them two, because we had we all kept laminated pictures of each other. Um, you know, in our uniform, you know, all throughout buds, because we know that we're always going to be there for each other, no matter what. And we had it laminated, you know, hey, can't quit. I, you can't, cause you can't quit. Cause you got this guy because you we're know, already in. We're, that's it. they were, we're already, already in. in. Yeah. I was the unfortunate, was I was the dummy that came in last. Right. I just couldn't figure out what I was going to do in my life. And I went in old, you know, also. So, um, it was just, I couldn't, I had too much riding on it and, and family. Yeah. And a family too. Yeah, and I had a family too. So talk about that. You went in as you met them when you were already a Marine. Mm-hmm. And then what was your career like? Yeah, so I did nine years uh Marine Corps infantry and then uh transferred over into the end of the teams after that. And I uh, I turned 30 at Buds. Wow. Yeah. Were you yeah. The oldest? That's like one of Yeah. Almost close. probably in your class, right? Yeah, I was I, I was hey, the, I was the oldest and most senior in the class. Yeah. And I was a class leader. And uh our mean average is twenty. Two or twenty-three. Yeah, so you got to have a waiver of a twenty-eight. Yeah, and yeah. it's unheard of for from the little marine go. Yeah, yeah. Get in there. a zero, especially with combat experience. Yeah. They don't ever let them do that. Yep. Can you tell us why you wanted to go into the teams? I always tell people because I just needed a break from the core. I hear what that man just said. What was that? That's the best line you got, too, man. That's a good one. You know what? When you got a good I one, you got to stick with it. Because you got to reverse. If it's reverse, we'd be a conversation. <laughs> but it's not. I had a friend that was he's all three working for uh, Blackwater. And we and I'd met him when I was doing some work at his house. Remember when I called you? And I said, "What? What was the? What? We, this guy was in the Army, Navy, Air Force, the Rangers. Uh, uh, I we, was in the blind headed kid. He, yeah, he worked Klein. out with us that time. Yeah, worked Green out. Beret, yeah, Force Recon Marine, yeah. and then then a SEAL. That's we were in buds together. We, we were on the pool deck getting tortured. Wow. And and the instructors walk up and said that they're like, "You're a Force Recon Marine. You're a Green Beret. He's like, what the hell are you doing here? He's like, oh, I just thought I'd take a break. He's yeah. built just like yeah. Tommy. That's exactly just, like just like him. They could be twins. Yeah, man. I have to, I just gnarly as some bitch you ever met, dude. Yeah." Tough dude, too. He <laughs> is. Tough as I mean, like, should swing an axe back in a uh, thousand years ago. Yeah. That kind of guy. Hell, man. That's yeah, a true, true badass. Yeah, he is. Cool. I need a break. We got him. That's what he said. Cow. I'm here to take a break. I met him that time, and I called him. I called Morgan on the phone. I said, man, do you know this dude? He said, yeah, I know him. I said, God damn, is he crazy? He said, yeah, he's crazy as you are. You can't believe it. I said, oh, shit. 
But I mean, it was, but it was last guy. It was one of those things. My 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 time was coming to an end. Uh, my 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 ground time. I wanted to stay on the. I wanted to stay on the field with 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 the boys. You know that that was it. And uh, I remember uh, Mojo had just finished. Was it jump school? And you drove up to Lejeune, and we kind of chatted for a little bit. Ooh, where, where was it? I thought it was jump school because you drove up from Bragg. That's <coughs> right. Gate oh, number yeah. five. Right after bus. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That so wasn't, I'll tell you, I was an airborne. And then he was like, hey, man. He go, yeah. He goes, hey, man, why don't you come you over? Bragg? No, no, no. I was at Lejeune. Okay. I was still in core. And we were oh, kind of talking right, about right, what, right. what to do, what I was going to do, and everything. He goes, dude, why don't you come over? I'm like, I don't know, man. I, that, that's, a, if that's even a possibility or whatever. You know, and he goes, dude, freaking. Marcus knows people. I made a lot of phone calls for that one. You did. You did. And I made a lot of phone calls too. But the funny thing is, is that it wasn't about it. That gave me opportunity. But I remember Marcus always told me, he was like, look, man, um, I'll set it up for you, but you got to knock them down. You know, you, you just go in there and be you. And then it'll either happen or it won't. But we're pretty sure you're going to get in. It's not a big deal. And then he goes, once you get the buds, that's all you, bro. And the funny thing is, is that you, you, know, you talk about your friends. You think they're going to help prep you for buds or this, that, and the other. And they're just like, well, it ain't a soup bone workout. Enjoy. <laughs> I got nothing from either of them. Oh, my god, Nothing. To what we're, actually, though, what can you tell them? Nothing. I mean, shit, really you're nothing. tough, you're tough. No, I mean, yeah, maybe, maybe tricks here and there. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. But the, the funny thing is, is that their love showed up in, they called all my instructors they because they had been to combat with them, right? And they and they were waiting for me. What year was this? This was 2007. Oh, wow. Shit, yeah. that ain't nothing with well. yeah. As Morgan, when he, when he pulled up there, San Diego. I had just left. Thing. That's because, I wife. mean, the instructors are still fresh off of hating my ass. Yeah. Do we need to talk about why? Up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, we can if you want. <laughs> we're all already done. That. Okay, yeah. got it. Okay. Sorry. That's been told. So, uh, can each of you say your favorite motivating quote from Soup Bone? <laughs> I'll tell you one I remember. Uh, or not favorite, but something that stuck in your head that got you through some hard times. Oh, man. Yeah, I got one. He used to tell me all the time. He's like, hey, look, you're going to cry, and that's okay. Because like, I remember, you, you get down, you get your rack at night, you're going to be lonely, you're going to be tired, you're going to be wet, you're going to be mad. I remember that conversation. Yeah, it's okay to cry. I just always remember Super Bowl loves you. Aww. Yeah. That was like the, that was like the, that. that was like the, that was the, that was like the, that was the, that was like 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 the, that was with all the women. Man, bitch, I hope you die. With my- <laughs> what about you, David? I was I never could stretch very good. He always said, I'm gonna break this big son bitch in my <laughs> Yeah, right? Yeah. He didn't know the tail good. He's just jumping up and down on my back trying to make me stretch. I'm gonna break this big son bitch down. Yeah. Hey, Dave was in something else. I thought, man, you, you want to do this? Told her, why? Hell I'm going hunting. This is our this is the baddest one we got. Oh yeah. The hunter back there. Well I, I said, well, I'm gonna teach you. I mean, this, the seals are getting the, the top cover, but that sucker in the back with the hat on. Yeah. The baddest one we got, dude. Yeah. yeah. The baddest I, one we got. I didn't know. How far I could really push him before he jumped on me and beat me down. Isn't that scary? I yeah. same thing growing up. Yeah. I was like, hey man, how much can you mess shit. with this dude before he started swinging? Knock your bitch ass out. Not, <laughs> he's kind of letting yeah. you beat him. <laughs> yeah. Think about that. And I was yeah. like, he's got nice enough for me to let him whip his ass. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> give him a so it took me a while to see how far I could push on him, you know, to get him going. I kind of worked him into my program and shit. He did a great job. <laughs> so before we end this, Tommy, can you tell your story? Because not only did you have this crazy life and go into two different branches of service. Yeah. Um, you also survived a major brain surgery. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us about that and sure. your recovery from that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, and, and I'll tie it back into this too, because it still applies. Uh, so a lot of stuff, and this is also a plug for guys to go get their stuff checked, right? Um, I One thing we never want to admit is weakness, right? We kind of got taught that. But at the same time, if there is something going wrong, you know it, and you need there, there's help out there for you. That there really is. So I was having um, really bad TBI symptoms. You know, I'd been and blown up a few times and a couple of helicopter, helicopter crashes, and it was just starting to wear on me. Memory was getting bad. The fog was getting pretty pretty rough. So uh, there's a uh, clinic up in Boston called Home Base that uh, sees vets. You know, that are having PTSD, TBI, all that type of stuff. You know, and uh, I was, I think I was the first guy to go in there that was uh, from the soft community. 
that was active uh, at the time. And uh, the first thing they do is a neck and brain scan. And, um, you know, that you go in with, you get your scans and then you go in with the doc. And usually it's just you and the doc. I walked in there and there was about, I don't know, maybe eight people in there. And I go, well, what's the party here for? What's, what's, what's going on? And they're like, sir, we'd like you to take a seat. I'm like, why? Did you guys find a tumor? And they're like, ooh. And I went, well, you. Who told you? You, <laughs> you have my attention, <laughs> right? So, uh, so, I, so I took a seat. And um, if you remember those old everlasting gobstoppers, I have one of those attached to the back of my brain stem. And then I had a cyst about as big as my hand that was inside my skull. Um, you know, inside the, or outside? Inside. Yeah, right. yeah, it was inside. Yeah, it was, it was pushing my brain forward. creating. So it was space. a gap between the brain and the end. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So... Uh, and they look, it's kind of a funny story, you know, it, it's all quasi this, you know, everything we got from, from, from the soup bone era. Uh, I sat back down, I was sitting down and they go, well, what, what do you got? You know, what do you have to say? Is there anything? And they went in for like a hug and I'm like, no, no, don't touch me. I don't want to hug. And they go, well, what do you, what's going on? We just told you, you know, and we are potentially going to have to have brain surgery and this, that, and the other. I said, well, I got an hour and a half left uh, till my next meeting that you guys have. Where's your gym? And they went, what? I said, where's your gym? I said, I got, I got, I can lift shoulders before you guys, you know, do whatever. And they're like, why do you, uh, what? And I go, look, man, this is the way I'm wired up. Iron therapy is the way I get through stuff. And if I don't push myself hard, then I can't like process stuff in my head. Right. And that's it. And they didn't understand that. So it was kind of cool going back and forth. Anyway, fast forward three and a half years later, it's now the size of a golf ball. And, um, the neurosurgeon that I was seeing up in, up at mass general in Boston, he's like, Hey, we need to go in and we need to go in in April. And it was what i think it was january at the time and i went well, well i mean you know, no time like the present let's do this rock and roll so um i just you know sat down said my prayers um you know talked with my wife and kids for a little bit and uh just something came over me it was like look man this is just another speed bump i'm gonna get over this just like every other thing i mean we've all been through a whole bunch of rough stuff but it's just it's just another hurdle that's all it is i'm going to come out everything's going to be fine so now what are we going to do i'm going to start training so I tra- I came up with a workout program and just trained like I was going on deployment, right? Like I was going after Bin Laden, who, name your guy, you know, I was going to go after him and, and, and just got in shape best I possibly could because I knew that the better shape that I was going in, uh, going into it, the easier I was going to be on recovery. So they went in um, what was supposed to have been a uh, eight hour surgery ended up being, I think, like 12 um, I had a stroke during surgery and um, one of the docs that was part of the surgical team had COVID with my skull open. So that's cool too. Um, that's one way to get it. I mean, you know, if you're going to get COVID, you better do it the man Send way. Send it in there. You know what I'm saying? I mean, let's up? direct. There let's see go. if you got it. Straight, Straight to the, the brain. brain. Let's see what you got. And I never got it. So what does that tell you? Anyway, uh, <clears throat> but it did get me quarantined in my room for the entire time I was in ICU afterwards. So... You know, they they did the surgery. Um, when I woke up, I was blind in my left eye because apparently it was pushing against one of my um, optic nerves. Optic nerve. Yeah. So and that was a, obviously a great big concern. That they, happened after, right? Yeah. This was when I woke up. I woke when I when they woke me up. They're like, hey, hey, hey. And then they start doing all the function checks, you know, for everything. And I was like, and they go, well, you see anything wrong? I'm like, well, I got feeling this. Hey, is it weird that I'm blind in an eye? And, and they, they thought it was weird that I was cracking jokes about stuff like this, you know, and they well, you know, and the neurosurgeon came down. Hey, I was like, look, man, let's just give it a night. Let's we'll see what happens. Well, yeah, 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 exactly. Next morning, oh, my eye, all I see is a blur. Like, I, it's like I look, I saw white yeah. just like that. Thank God, right? Yeah, exactly. I'm like, Whew, all right, cool. So then I was like, again, comfort comes over me. Everything's going to be fine. The physical therapist comes in, says, hey, you know, oh, it, oh she's all upbeat, this, that, and the other. She didn't know what she was walking into or who she was walking into, right? So I'm in the bed and I'm sitting there doing flutter kicks and they're like, what? And they put that in my chart and the doc came in and said, what the heck's wrong with you? And I go, well, I got to get it in. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that's just it. It's just the, the way we're wired up. It's, it's, it's just what we do. We don't stop ever. It doesn't matter if we're down. It doesn't matter if we're hurt. It doesn't matter if somebody thinks they can beat us. We will not stop no matter what. I had, I had the, I got pictures and video of me uh, with that little stick. What'd you call it? That has all the, uh, the yeah, IV bags IV, and everything. Yeah. yeah. The IV bags. And then I also had a drain caddy, go, yeah, the IV caddy. going into my brain, right? right? Coming out with brain fluid. I got a picture of it. 
and I, and I pushed all that stuff to the back and I'd found a recovery band and I whopped that over the top and I'm sitting there doing tricep press downs oh on, on it, you know? <laughs> it, it, and then they're like, what the heck? And I said, and the PT came back in and she goes, well, heard what you've been doing. You, you're exercising. I said, yeah. I said, I've been standing up on my own too. And they go, we haven't cleared you to stand up. I said, I know, but I want to see what I can do. And they go, I said, well, what are the requirements for me to get out of here? They're like, well, you need to walk forwards and backwards without, with good balance and walk up and down stairs. Well, I was quarantined in the room, couldn't go up and down stairs. So I figured I was going to, so I, what I did was I grabbed hold of that, uh, that band, remembering rubber band man days, right? Put my foot inside of it and started working my foot, like as if I was stepping, you know, working step ups. And then all those old school rubber band stuff, he had us doing around a tree. Yeah. I was doing it around stuff in that room. And all that stuff started coming back. And that started memorizing me. You guys were in my head. Everybody that ever did anything good for me was in my head, man. And that's what was, that's how I was recovering. And I'm like, my boys are there. They're waiting on me. No matter what. It was just, it was almost like I went all the way back, you know? And at the, it's, I'm like at the end of my ride and just no matter what, it's till the end, yeah. you know? Um, and, and, I, and I just kept pushing it. And I said, hey, what's the procedure? What do I need to do to get out of here? And they go, well, you're going to be in ICU. Then you're going to go step down. And then we'll, you pass the PT test and we'll get you out of here. I said, okay, so the PT test is my requirement to get out. And they said, yep. I said, cool. In five days, you're going to get me out. Of, you're going to release me. You're going to give me that test and you're going to release me straight from ICU. And I'm going, and I'm going to start my workout, my routine. And uh, they're like, what? I said, just trust me. It's going to happen. And I did there, work myself out. All I had to do was lit, was work out in the room and did see and, and test myself. I'd pushed all the monitors and all that stuff away. And I was walking with one hand on the bed doing laps best I possibly could. You know, um, I had you guys there. I had other friends calling me, family calling me. And it was it was cool having that support uh, background. And I was like, all right, I got I got my team. We're, we're going to it's time to get back in the fight. And then uh, and, and, and then sure enough, five days later, they let me go. And then they're like, look, you're going to have um, you can only lift five pounds because I said, when can I get back in the gym and start this? And they go, well, the road to recovery is going to be on you. You're going to set your own roadmap. There was nothing given. They didn't have one. They're the experts and the best they are at cutting into it and get, getting stuff out of your brain. But the recovery aspect is something different. Nothing was written down. So I was like, all right, I'm going to write something down. So from day one to what it took me, it took me 14 weeks and one day to get back to where I was right before going into surgery. Oh my gosh. I was yeah. drive, determination, and I wrote every single thing down. And it was, and I went back and I tried to give them the, you know, say, Hey, here's the, blueprint. yeah, here's the blueprint. They didn't want it. Yeah. Went, went back to human performance team. Here's the blueprint. Cool, man. Nice. That, that, that's interesting stuff. Okay. I mean, it's not like I'm trying to force something on. It. I'm trying to help other people like this. This will tell you, this is a roadmap to help people that have gone through this surgery, no matter what age they are, that they have a fighting chance. All they have to do is have the fight in them, mm-hmm. you know? So uh, there was only one crew of people, and that's the boys up at Westside Barbell up in Columbus, Ohio. Give them a shout. That's it. Everyone knows about them. I want to talk about them on the podcast. Hey, that's fine. Anyway, but they're, they're, those got you want to talk about culture? You want to talk about team room style behavior? You want to talk about an awesome group of individuals? Uh, go Just on a little Columbus. shout out to everybody at Westside for getting my boy back right. Yeah, and they got my head right, and they they, they brought me into, and I discovered another family outside the, the military, but yeah, they're way up there too, aren't they? A little bit. Mm. That's awesome. But what I'm saying though is that I, is that even during the, all those times during Hell Week, during the worst pains that I've ever been in my life, it always went back to Angel's Gate every single time. That's where the pain started. Thank you. It is, man. <laughs> it is. So, do you still have Angel's Gate? No, we sold it. Oh, you did. When we left, the young yard, Angels. The yard is. The, I, mean, <laughs> I like how you put it that yeah, way. That, that was good. That was good. That was a good transition. That was a good transition. I drive by there all the time when we're gone. It's uh, the, the yard's not there. It's asphalt. Asphalt, right? What? Oh, really? I haven't been there, man. Since yeah. We, I so you, you actually asphalt. sold the house and everything. Mm-hmm. Business. We used to do weddings. Yeah, I love yeah, walking I in remember, there, man. I smell like a bed, bath, and beyond. Yeah. And you go yeah. in there and just, I mean, yeah, the, the yard was a terror. Yeah. But the house. But, you got, but we the, got it all fixed up and turned up. Morgan used to help a lot. And Tommy and yeah. Marcus. They renewed the vows. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 25th. Yeah. Right? yeah. 25th. Yeah, yeah we're there. Yeah. Had a habit. You remember that? Uh, back, <laughs> what they did they renewed their, their vows. They renewed their vows and they did the 25th anniversary yeah. in the back. Over there, Mark and said, "We were all there." I remember. I remember first time they started to work out. Mark, Mark come rolling up there and he worked out with me first. 
Morgan, I think, was skiing somewhere. Or something. He was. I was the first guy on the porch. Yeah. He went skiing. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, remember that? Remember, yeah. So that morning, Morgan, Morgan, Morgan showed up. Was that up. Larry with me? No. It was just me by myself, yeah, right? And then know, you worked out. And then I brought yeah. Uh, somebody. Somebody. Well, I remember telling Morgan, he showed up from that ski trip. He was like, is it tough? Is it hard? Is it hard? <laughs> He's like, how many do we do in the beginning? How many, how many do we do? <laughs> he tried to get the end. I was like, man, it's not what Remember on the porch? Yeah, we, were, we had our feet up on that on the yeah, ledge there. Yeah. And you were like, give me 100? Yeah. 100, just for Morgan being well, Martin, gone. Martin popped off. Talking me. smack. He says, so you can be real. No, yeah, 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 that's what he said. Oh, oh, you remember that? Dude, I'll never I'm forget I'm that I'm when he said that. Marcus and you could just see fire in his eyes. Oh. He, Soup gave him, he's like, hey, man, you good? You Can, can you go? How many think you can get? Yeah, he's like, oh, I'll get 100 easy. Shit, I'm easy not going yeah, I've been quick. doing it. He said, I man, do every night. Gonna, something like that. He, he said, said you're going to be real proud of me, Soup. I'm doing 100 push-ups a day. A day. He's like, well, give me 100 right now. He looked at me like he could. That's what we had to start shit. out with. Like, say what? Boom, boom. That'd be the warm-up. Yeah. And then you have to keep going. And then you have to stay with each other. And then if you just stop. to be together. Oh, count out loud. Did count out loud? Yeah, had to freaking count out loud, dude. And do it. You better go. You better go. Like this. <laughs> and one would start dipping, dude. and it, it on it like get just a hound dog. Kind of shake. That, hey, oh, you know he'd what, walk bitch? into the house trying to go get something. He'd be like Ooh. nine, ten, eleven, fifteen, thirty. You know, and you come walking have back door up. Open. You leave the door open. together. Like Don't let me look out that window. You do all of them. Do all of them. Oh my gosh. One. Because he two. gives some astronomical number. Number. You know, but, but the, the funny thing is though, is that you didn't know you could do it. Yeah. Yeah, everybody goes in there and is like, hey, man, what's a lot? But like 50 would be a lot. No one ever thinks, all right, give me 150. <laughs> You're like, well, then what? 50 is not a lot. Yeah. When, when, no. you hit, when he hits you with that. Matter of yeah. fact, we get to 50 quick. Yeah. yeah. That, again, warm up. Warm up. Oh you have to warm up. The well, warm up was hell. It was hell. Yeah. The warm was the worst, man. So are you, you're not training anybody now? Are you, you're retired from it? Well, I'm 77, girl. Come on. I know, but. I've trained some of the best people in the world. <laughs> My goodness. I feel like you need like a YouTube of your own of videos just to keep the legend going on. Well, I just wish we could have seen our what, what's in my what's in my heart yeah. and I wish coming with David, all these I kids see. I've trained that's we really good that. to succeed it. We remember each other. I hope they can but, pass pass it on. You well, know, pass have, it on to somebody. Tommy said that he trained somebody and got him into the team. Yep, so good. He's, he just checked in team four. Mark yeah. Mark Marcus got the deal. He he said, "My retired. He could. He could really take on people." Thank you, Soup. I appreciate that offer, man. What else you doing? <laughs> yeah. What else you got going? Yeah. <laughs> well, the kids, man. Is. But uh, I, hope, I hope I hope this work out. Leave it on. It I does. Hey, like, thank you for coming out and being a part of this, Soup, man. man. Thanks for being in our lives. We love you. She got you in here a long time ago, but Tommy's been busy, and David's. You know, we just all appreciate from from all of us. Yeah. Even the boys well, in here, man. What you did about y'all? My love for you grows bigger every day. Yeah. You say in my heart and live with me even when I die. So, Amen. Thank you. God bless. This is the Team Never Quit podcast. Don't so buckle up, Buttercup.